Christians, that is, believers in Jesus, are washed clean, they are redeemed, they are restored, they are declared righteous by the grace of God. And yet, so often, we don't act like it. Let's talk about it. After you take a shower, whether it's in the morning, afternoon, or evening, the last thing you're going to do is immediately turn around and go dumpster diving, or worse, go roll around in a pile of manure. Yeah, stinky. But when we willfully sin, or when we justify sin, that's exactly what we're doing spiritually. We've been washed clean in the blood of Jesus, and then we turn around and wallow and roll around in the fecal matter of sin. The author of Hebrews warns us against this, and he gives us three things we should do instead, but begins it by explaining some reasons why we can do these three things. So, before I get into it, if you haven't done it already, be sure and hit that subscribe button and click that little bell to stay up to date so when I upload new videos, you'll be notified. Now, that being said, let's look at what the author of Hebrews had to say. In this devotional, we're going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 25. Now, this is part of a larger section in which the author of Hebrews gives us a warning against willfully sinning. Instead, he's calling us to holiness. He's calling us to righteousness. He's calling us to live up to the standard that Jesus has set. Now, he gives us three ways we can go about doing that, and he gives us two bases or two reasons why we can do these three things, and he begins with the bases or the reasons. So, beginning in verse 19, let's take a look at it. The author writes, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great, a great priest over the house of God, now I want to stop there because after this he gets into the three things to do. But here, the author gets into some things that are some Old Testament ideas and things that aren't necessarily familiar for us. The first reason he gives us that we can live a holy life is that we have confidence to enter the holy place through the curtain, through which is the flesh of Jesus. Now, this is a reference to the temple. In the temple, they had the outer court, the inner court, the, the holy area, but then the holy of holies. Dividing the Holy of Holies from the rest of it was a big, tall, thick curtain. Now, the Holy of Holies is where God would make his presence known, where he would manifest himself, in, in essence, where he would make himself known and make his presence known. And no one was able to enter it because if they did, they die, because we're all sinners. Only the high priest was allowed to go past the curtain into the Holy of Holies, and he could only do it once a year, and even then, only after he's been ritually cleansed by the blood of animals. But he had to go past this curtain. When Jesus died, and his flesh was broken, and he took the sin of us upon himself, and his body was broken, the veil, the curtain in the temple, ripped in two, opened it up, granting access to the Holy of Holies, saying you now can enter through that curtain and approach the presence of God, the throne of God, and you won't die if you come the right way. And how was the right way? Through the blood of Jesus. Jesus' flesh, that, that curtain was a type and shadow, a metaphor for Jesus' body. His body is the curtain that we enter through, that we go through. His blood, the animal blood at the temple, was a type and shadow, a metaphor for Jesus' blood. Jesus' perfect, holy, sinless blood. When we're washed in that, by the blood of Jesus, we're able to approach God because we are not on ourselves righteous, but we are declared righteous by the grace of God through the blood of Jesus. And the Old Testament, I'm sorry, the, the uh the author of Hebrews is referencing this and saying, 
Jesus is that curtain. Jesus is that veil that we go through to access. And we have confidence to come before God because we have the blood of Jesus. We are coming by his son, by faith in Jesus alone. Faith alone in Jesus alone, we are coming. And so we have confidence. And if we have confidence that we can come to God, we can have confidence that we can live the way God wants us to live. The second reason that he gives us is found in verse 21. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God. Now, like I said, the high priest is the only one that went into the Holy of Holies. Well, Jesus is the high priest, the highest of high priests, you could say. He is the one. The high priest of the temple was a type and shadow of and a metaphor for Jesus, the high priest. Now, types and shadows is an idea that's actually taught in Scripture. It says, you know, the script, oh, New Testament says that the Old Testament is a type and shadow of what Jesus fulfilled. And so, the high priest of the temple is a metaphor, a type and shadow of Jesus. Jesus is our high priest. Now, what did the high priest do? The high priest was the mediator for between man and God, the one who went between man and God. Because if man tried to approach, he'd die. He was the one who went to God on behalf of man. Jesus is the high priest. He is today our mediator before the Father. He goes before the Father on our behalf saying, This person, because they have faith in me, they are your child, God. Father, they are ours. And so we have access to the throne of God and we have confidence in that. And we have a high priest Who's mediating? We have access through Jesus. We have Jesus mediating. And we have confidence because of this. And because of the confidence this should give us as Christians, we can live a holy life and do what God's asked us to do. So what is it that the author of Hebrews is telling us to do? In verses 22 to 25, the author of Hebrews gives us three things that we need to do as Christians and these three things will help us be able to live the way that Jesus told us to live. So let's go ahead and read through that. Beginning in verse 22, the author writes, Let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So here we have the three things that we as Christians are called to do in, by the author of Hebrews. The first one, in verse 20, 22, he says, Let us draw near with a true heart. We are to draw near to God. We are to come before God. We have confidence that we can, so we should do it. Now, how do we come near to God? How do we draw near to God? Well, we do it through His Word. One of the ways we do it is through His Word. We spend time in God's Word, reading His Word, studying His Word, meditating on His Word, letting the Holy Spirit speak through His Word. We, we need to be hearing God's voice in His Word, because we can hear His voice in His Word. That's why He gave us His Word. Another way we do it is through prayer. We do it through prayer, by going to God in prayer and humbling ourselves and saying, God, here am I. Here's what I'm thinking. Here's how I'm feeling. I'm giving myself to you. And I have a video on prayer. I'll put a link to the description in the, descri in the description, not to the description. I'll put a link in the description down below and maybe put a card up here somewhere. But I'll link to that, my, my video on what prayer is. But we need to draw near to God. And we need to draw near to God. Why? Because we can draw near to God. And we need to draw near to God, it says, in a certain way, with a true heart, full of assurance of faith, and our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed. That is... Forgiven. Part of drawing near to God is saying, God, forgive me of my sins and being forgiven and recognizing we need that forgiveness. But draw near to God. Are you drawing near to God in your walk with Jesus? Are you drawing near to God on a daily basis or even a weekly or monthly basis? Are you drawing near to God? 
How are you going to start drawing near to God? Comment below how you're going to draw near to God today, tomorrow, this week, next week. How are you going to do it? Let me know. Uh, the second thing we need to do is in verse 23. He says, let us hold fast the confession. That is, don't give up faith. You've been taught the gospel. You know the gospel. You have the word of God right there, well, on your phone or in your printed Bible. If you're saved, you've heard the gospel. And if not, well, here's the gospel. We're all sinners condemned to death. But Jesus died and paid the penalty that we owe. He paid the penalty for sin so that all who put their faith in Jesus alone are recipients of God's grace alone. And that by God's grace alone, that we receive through faith alone, in Jesus alone, we are saved. And we are declared righteous. We are redeemed, washed, forgiven. That's the gospel. And we should love God and love others. But he says in verse 23, hold fast. You know, there are people who are giving up on the gospel. Today, there are thousands of, of Christians who are giving up on the true gospel and turning to other beliefs and other teachings and heresies all over the place. We need to hold fast to our confession. On top of it, there are people who are struggling right now, wondering, is God there? Is God listening? And maybe they're starting to lose faith. I've been there. I've been there and done that. I've had those struggles with wondering if God's listening. I've been there. And maybe you're starting to lose faith because of it, because of a hard time you're going through. Don't give up on God. You may not know it, you may not feel it, you may not sense it, you may not even want to believe it, but he is there. Don't give up the faith. Don't go into other teachings. Don't give up the true gospel for a false one. And don't give up your faith in the middle of the hardship. Hold on to it. Hold on to it tight. And say, God, I'm yours. And I want you to be mine. God, I need you. Hold on to your faith. The third thing he tells us, he says, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works in verse 24. And don't give up going to church in verse 25, as some people do. Yes, there are people who quit going to church for whatever reason. And I've been there and I've done that too before. We've all done that, if we're honest. Um, in fact, I'm sure there's even pastors out there who have been like, I don't want to go to church today. Been there, done that. But we shouldn't give up going to church because we need each other. By going to church and spending time with other believers, we can encourage another. We can stir up one another, he says. That is, we can motivate, we can mentor, we can teach, we can challenge, we can help each other get our theology right by spending time in God's Word and doing the first two things. We can help each other grow as Christians and we can only help each other if we come together. One of the best ways to come together is in your local church. Start going to church. Spend time with other believers. Spend time helping each other, serving one another. And he says, all the more as the day draws near, uh, is drawing near, the day that's drawing near is the second coming. I don't know when he's coming back. It could be before I finish this video. If, I get, if you get to the end, then it wasn't. But... It could be before I finish this recording this video. It could be next week, next year, next decade, next month. I don't know when, but he's coming back. But it's getting closer. And as that day is getting closer, we should be spending more time helping each other, encouraging one another. So these are the things that the author of Hebrews is telling us that we should do so that we don't fall into, well, sin's okay for this reason and that reason and this other reason, or falling into, well, I'm just going to sin. We shouldn't sin. We should resist temptation. We should strive not to sin. And when we do sin, we should be, repent of that sin and seek God's forgiveness, and He will forgive. But we should strive not to sin. How do we do that? By doing these three things. So, that being said, let's bring all this home. Temptation is all around us, and Satan and his minions make sin sound and seem and feel so good and it's so easy to give in. And today there are many Christians who are giving in and many more who are even justifying their sin, making their sinful acts seem righteous when the fact is they're sinful. The author of Hebrews says don't do that. When we justify sin and when we willfully sin, 
It's like taking a shower and then going and rolling around in a dung pile. Sin is that grotesque, that dirty, that filthy. We've been washed in the blood of Jesus, so we should live like we are clean, because we have been clean. We should live according to the standard and live up to the standard that Jesus has set. And the author of Hebrews tells us we can do this because we have confidence, because we have access to God, and we have confidence because we have a high priest. We come to God through Jesus, and we have Jesus, our high priest, mediating for us. And so we can be the people that God wants us to be. And he gives us three ways to do it. First, he says, draw near to God. And then he says, stay firm in your faith, don't give up. And then he says, help each other grow in your faith. How are you going to do those things this week? How are you doing those things today? If you've been doing these things, comment below how you've been doing it and encourage other people. If you haven't been, then comment below what you're going to do to start doing these things and start living the way Jesus wants us to. We're called to a higher standard, a holy standard, a divine standard. We are God's children. We should act like it. I hope this video is helpful. God bless. If you enjoy the content on this channel, then check out the merch, mp3s, and more at johnrotra.com.